In this chapter, we're going to look at a few more basic user interface controls that come with Telerik UI. We've handled buttons in the last chapter, so now we'll see how to add different kinds of inputs to our forms, including entries, pickers, and multi-line editors. We'll also convert our details page interface to a tabbed layout, and we'll complete the dashboard filtering requirement by adding a picker for date range selection. And just like we did in the last chapter, we're going to be referencing the documentation on the Telerik website. So make sure you have that open and handy because we're going to be doing some exercises as well. And we're going to start off with input controls next. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the different text entry inputs that are available. And the best place to start is looking at the documentation. So head on over to the docs and take a look at controls. The most common input control you'll use is the entry. If we have a look at the getting started section, this is the basic look of it. It's just a way to enter text. Let's copy this code for a rad entry and head over to our project. Open up views, backlog, pop-ups, and then add item pop-up. This is a good place as any because you're already familiar with this page. And we already have the Telerik namespace imported at the top, which is one of the steps that's required if you have a look at the documentation that's actually the next step. We've already done this for this particular page as we've added the button in the last chapter. So let's scroll down a little bit here and we have a couple of editor controls here already. These are the ones that come with Maui. Let's replace this title editor with the rad entry. So I'm going to paste in what we've copied. I'm going to keep everything the same, but I'm going to add the text binding here as well. And I can just copy the binding from the previous one. Let's paste that in there. And now let's run this and have a look. Head on over to the backlog page and click on the add button. Okay, here is our pop-up. You'll notice at the top we have the original editor control and I can start typing in there. For example, my item is the title that I want. Right below it, it says enter text here. This is the new rad entry. I'm going to switch over there and type in my item. Now you'll notice right away that we have a little X here. This icon allows you to easily clear out the field, which is something pretty handy on mobile devices. Notice the placeholder color is different. We can control that. The placeholder text is being controlled, the font size. And if we take a look at the documentation, you'll see that we have quite a lot of different settings that we can provide for this entry. It also comes with password functionality. So if we set is password to true, if this were in fact a password field. Now when I enter text, you'll see that it's behaving like a mobile password field where each character turns into a little dot so the password is hidden. You can also set read only state, define the maximum length, set whether text prediction is on or off on the mobile device and so on. If you don't want the clear button or that button with the X, you can also turn that off by setting the clear button visibility to never. And then if you start entering text, you won't get that button. The entry also allows you to add validation, which will show up with an error message like this uh, that pops up an error view should validation fail. Now, entry is a very common control that you'll be using, but there is a few other text entry controls that are separate. For example, there is a very handy masked entry control. And if you take a look at the mask types, you have a text mask that you can set this is very handy if you have certain requirements for the text that needs to be entered. As an example, let's say you require alphanumeric characters in the field, you'd set the mask to capital A, which will only allow alphanumeric characters. You can set it for digits only, dollar amounts, and so on. Besides masked entry, there's also numeric input. And this one comes with a slightly different user interface as it's going to give you plus and minus buttons to increase or decrease the numerical value inside the box. Let's have a quick look at this one. I'm going to copy this rad numeric input control example. And even though our form doesn't really need it, I'm going to add that to our form here just so that we can have a quick look at it. And back on the add new item page, you'll see that we have a plus and a minus. And if I tap these, the value in the numeric input increases or decreases. You can also manually change that number. But if you try to type any other characters like I'm trying now, <laughs> it's not going to accept those. A very common UI control to use on mobile is a picker. If we go to the documentation, we'll see list picker here. List picker is very versatile, allowing templating and looping, which is where you have an infinite list that virtually scrolls. You can change the picker mode between a pop-up style and a drop-down style. 
And in our example app, we already have a picker that we use in a couple of places, but the one we're gonna look at is on the dashboard. So head on over to the dashboard and you'll see that this right here is a picker. This is the default picker that comes with Maui. We can select a range and this will affect uh, what is displayed down here in the open and closed issues. Now this picker is located on the dashboard page. So head on over to views, dashboard and dashboard page. And here it is. This is the picker that we see in the app right here. Now your first exercise in this course is to replace that picker with the rad picker. Go ahead, pause the video, try it out, and then come back when you're done. Did you try it? Okay, let's do this together now. We're gonna go over to the getting started section in the docs, and we'll see the basic structure of how we implement a rad list picker. This example is a little bit more complex than what we need because it also has an item template. We're gonna start out nice and easy. Let's go back to the code. I'm gonna stop this from running for now. And right uh, at the top here inside the grid, I'm going to add a Telerik rad list picker. And you can see that Telerik is not a recognized namespace. So in the documentation, we're going to copy the namespace right over here. And let's add that to our content page declaration at the top. And now we have IntelliSense showing us what's available. What we want is the rad list picker. And we're going to basically follow the same structure that we have in our regular list picker. We're gonna add this to grid row zero and grid column span two. So let's copy those and paste them here. Then we need the item source of where to get our list of items. And we'll set that to ranges just like we had in our old picker. And then we're gonna use the display member path. Now this is a little bit different than the Maui picker uses. This one has a binding, item display binding, but the rad list picker just uses a path. So you define that by giving the name of the property, which happens to be name that we want to display. Now the label is called title in the regular picker, but in the rad list picker, it's called placeholder. Let's say select a range and let's start with that. I'm gonna delete the old picker so it's not interfering with our new picker. And let's have a look. Go into the dashboard page, and there is our new picker. If I tap on select a range, you'll see that we have pretty much the same interface that we did before, except now we have all the power that the rad list picker gives us that the regular picker doesn't, including a clear button. So we can have is clear button visible, set that to true. And now you can see that we have a little X over here. If we select something in the picker and we wanna clear that out, we can do that using the clear button. Just to demonstrate the looping mode, we can set is looping to true. And while it doesn't make much sense in our situation because we have only a couple of values and it's actually a little bit confusing for this UI, this will give you an idea of how looping mode works if you had many items here, for example. Another interesting property is picker mode. You can set this to pop up, which it is by default, or you can set it to drop down. If you set it to drop down, it might not be so obvious when you're toggling this, but the behavior is quite a bit different here. You would usually pair the drop down mode with another property called is toggle button visible. And if you set that to true, you'll have a little toggle button here, which you can also toggle on and off. It gives it more of a visual indication that this is in fact a drop down. So that's list picker. A very common UI control to use on mobile is a picker. If we go to the documentation, we'll see list picker here. List picker is very versatile, allowing templating and looping which is where you have an infinite list that virtually scrolls. You can change the picker mode between a pop-up style and a drop-down style. And in our example app, we already have a picker that we use in a couple of places, but the one we're gonna look at is on the dashboard. So head on over to the dashboard and you'll see that this right here is a picker. This is the default picker that comes with Maui. We can select a range and this will affect what is displayed down here in the open and closed issues. Now this picker is located on the dashboard page. So head on over to views, dashboard and dashboard page. And here it is. This is the picker that we see in the app right here. Now your first exercise in this course is to replace that picker with the rad picker. Go ahead, pause the video, try it out and then come back when you're done. Did you try it? Okay, let's do this together now. We're gonna go over to the getting started section in the docs and we'll see the basic structure of how we implement a rad list picker. This example is a little bit more complex than what we need because it also has an item template. 
we're going to start out nice and easy. Let's go back to the code. I'm going to stop this from running for now. And right uh, at the top here inside the grid, I'm going to add that Telerik red list picker. And you can see that Telerik is not a recognized namespace. So in the documentation, we're going to copy the namespace right over here. And let's add that to our content page declaration at the top. And now we have IntelliSense showing us what's available. What we want is the rad list picker. And we're going to basically follow the same structure that we have in our regular list picker. We're going to add this to grid row zero and grid column span two. So let's copy those and paste them here. Then we need the item source of where to get our list of items. And we'll set that to ranges just like we had in our old picker. And then we're going to use the display member path. Now this is a little bit different than the Maui picker uses. This one has a binding item display binding, but the red list picker just uses a path. So you define that by giving the name of the property, which happens to be name that we want to display. Now the label is called title in the regular picker, but in the red list picker, it's called placeholder. Let's say select a range and let's start with that. I'm going to delete the old picker so it's not interfering with our new picker. And let's have a look. Go into the dashboard page and there is our new picker. If I tap on select a range, you'll see that we have pretty much the same interface that we did before, except now we have all the power that the rad list picker gives us that the regular picker doesn't, including a clear button. So we can have is clear button visible, set that to true. And now you can see that we have a little X over here. Another very useful control in mobile design is tabs. We have somewhat of a makeshift solution for tabs, and I'll show you that in a moment. Let's go over to backlog and select one of these items here. And you'll see at the top, we have details and tasks. We can switch between these to get to the different views about this particular item. Now, if we go to the code, open up views, then backlog, and then on the details page, which is where we are, you'll see how those tabs are implemented. And it's not very pretty. <laughs> we have a vertical stack layout, with a lot of nested radio buttons that have to be styled in a certain way with a visual state manager that changes the underline and it's a big headache and a hassle. We're going to replace all this with a Telerik UI control called tab view. So let's head over to the documentation and here is tab view. This is an example of what it could look like. You can see that all the tabs and the functionality between tabs is built in. You just add this to the page and everything is handled for you, all the visual state changes, and TabView does bring a number of improvements with it. This is what TabView looks like on mobile, and the nice thing about the way TabView is implemented is it actually resembles tabs. Not all mobile designs resemble tabs, so this is a pretty good implementation of that. Let's add this to our page, but before I do that, this is another opportunity for you to try this yourself. If you didn't do the last exercise, please try and do this one now. Don't forget that you not only have documentation, but you also have that demos project that you can look at that also has an example of tab view. All right, I hope you tried that. Let's do this together now. Now in the code, all that we really need are these two views. We have the details view, and that's where our form is. That's this view right here. And we have the tasks view, and that's the tasks page. That's all we really need. So we need to add tabs for each one of those. We're going to delete everything that's inside this vertical stack layout in a moment. For now, I'm going to add a grid for our main layout of this page. And we're going to work inside of this grid temporarily and then remove everything that's inside the vertical stack layout. So ignore that stuff for now. I'm keeping it around just so that we can move our child views into our new tab view. First thing we need to do is add our Telerik namespace to the page. And there it is. And now we need a rad tab view, just like that. Now the tab view has different tab view items in it. And that's Telerik tab view item. We're gonna have two of them, one for details and one for tasks. Let's make two copies of this. To differentiate them, we simply give you each one different header text. And this is what's displayed on the tab. One is gonna be details, and the other one's gonna be tasks. Now, let's go down here and we're going to copy our details view just the way it is without changing anything. And let's bring it up to here inside our first tab view item. There it is. 
And now let's just get our tasks view, copy that, and let's bring it up and paste it into our second tab view item. If you thought that was easy, you're right. Now let's delete all this stuff inside the vertical stack layout and look how much simpler our page is now. And not only that, but our tabs actually look good now and we get all this for free. We even get free animation that animates between the two tabs. Yet all the functionality remains exactly the same. We can fill out this form. We can use the pickers in the form, change the slider values, add tasks, and also delete tasks. Now the tab view is not only limited to what we've just implemented, which is the default behavior. You can also bind the selected item or the selected index, and you can react to the changes in tabs programmatically as well if you need to. You also have the selection changed event when an item changes. Have a look at the demos application for more examples. For the purposes of our course, we're going to be moving on.